also Real Madrid against Manchester City just so good. You know, we can do a quick recap. This was the starting 11. And as you can see, like, it looks perfect. But the problem is, we knew something was going to happen. Because if you look at the center back duo, Rudiger and Chouamini. Now, I have no problem with it, but I would have started Nacho. Okay, so you're thinking, well, if Nacho were to start, Kamavinga wouldn't play. And Kamavinga was a big factor in Real Madrid getting something out of this match. But I wasn't a fan of Chouamini at center back. And we quickly saw that in the very first minute of the game. First of all, Grealish gets the ball, takes on Chouamini. Chouamini already gives a yellow card away. So he's suspended for the next match. A big blow because whenever Chouamini doesn't play, Real Madrid are at a more higher risk of losing the game. The match goes on. The team looks like they are crumbling. And to be honest, my initial reaction was that we are going to crumble. I thought it's over, I thought Man City are just gonna go on and on, they're going to score more and more. But actually, as time went on, the team's defense solidified, it actually got better as time went on. Rudiger was sharp, and then it leads us to Kamavinga getting the ball on the right side, makes a small run, takes a shot on, and to be honest, I was just happy that it deflected and went in. I don't care how it went in. Two minutes later, Vinicius gets a beautiful ball, Plays one of the best balls I've ever seen. Straight up, Vinny is a genius. And you know, people say, well, Vinny didn't score. Y you know, that I find that insane because Vinny, even when he doesn't score, he's still the best player on that pitch. His performances are insane. But let's stop talking about Vinny. Rodrigo gets in the ball. You know, he makes a run. Akanji catches up. Rodrigo slows down. He then tries to get it through the goalkeeper, deflects off Okanji, the goalkeeper Ortega, left around footed, 2-1, Real Madrid look like comeback kings, and I mean Real Madrid always do this, and for the rest of the second half, Real Madrid will allow Man City to a old position for a majority of the half, and then we get to referee decisions, my goodness that referee was terrible, he was absolutely terrible, you know, there were multiple fouls on both sides of the spectrum. That should have been fouls. The ref allowed play to go on. Then, before the half ends, he blows the whistle 10 seconds before he's supposed to. So the first half is already rocky. Fans are already upset with how the ref is playing the game. The ref, as I said, trash. Second half comes and this is where I talk about Bellingham. Because Bellingham's performance was terrible. Genuinely, if he doesn't score a goal or an assist, his performance is bad. You know, we can talk about Ireland and Bellingham because they were both poor in that game. And I know Bellingham gets fouled a lot in La Liga, you can't argue about that. But to be honest, Man City were doing clean tackles on him. But he was begging for something out of it. And I didn't like that. To be honest, it pissed me off. And I just wanted play to continue, I didn't want all time place to be halted because he dives onto the floor looking for a foul or free kick whatever it is. Manchester City continued to attack however the defense was so solid. Lunen, let's actually speak about Manchester City's goal because we did not speak about that factor. Man City scored from a free kick but not a silver with a goal. I have so many examples of why Lunen's performance was bad. Exhibit A, but not a silver free kick. Why is he so far of it. Like, why is he so far from the opposite side of the goal? Bernardo Silva takes it. Lunen is so far that he doesn't react in time. And Bernardo Silva scores. Second half comes. Foden gets the ball. Scores a beauty. You know, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna go on a Lunen bandwagon of eight. And I think that wasn't Lunen's fault. I think that was just a pure class moment from Foden. And I think he's one of the best players in the world currently. He deserves the credit. People, no matter how much Hattrick he has scored in this time, people still find a way to discredit him. I actually think he's world class. So I'm thinking, okay, 2-2, we could still score. Then, Vardio gets the ball. Vardio, who's a centre-back, gets the ball and also on his weaker foot. If you didn't know, he's a left-footed player. On his weakest foot, he gets it on his right foot. Beautiful goal, you know, I can't complain again, I can't say Luton was bad there, 
just a moment of brilliance which you know it was disappointing but we kind of had that feeling Real Madrid would make a comeback out of this and they did because Bellingham was missing a lot of chances Vinny was kicking straight to the keeper Rodrigo kicking straight to the keeper it was frustrating but then one of the best moments of brilliance Vinny gets the ball from Modric Vinny was one of the best crosses of the game to Valverde and my goodness you have to see the goal for yourself because I can't explain it it looks like a rocket genuinely it looks like a rocket just flew into the goal because Valverde's hit on that ball was sensational genuinely sensational then we know momentum picked up Real Madrid we know we thought we were going to make a comeback but unfortunately City were holding position so well but then got to the 93rd minute the referee does another mishap why did he he blew again he blew the whistle again 5 seconds before he was supposed to I don't know what his agenda was but you know what let's calm down when it comes to the referee I hate talking about the referees and their performances because at the end of the day this was a good game but this match was so bad in the Real Madrid's case because in the preview for this game I previewed it and I said you know if Real Madrid get a draw or a loss out of this Santiago Bernabeu first leg it's a wrap we're not winning at the Etihad we should have gotten a win a win would have helped us hold that lead possibly at the Etihad unfortunately it's a draw which means practically due to away goals not existing and if it did City would have been favoured we have to go to the Etihad level bro this is it's, it's over it's over don't get your hopes up I actually say go into this game expecting another 4-0 honestly because two or many who has been the most important player this season will not be playing Militao however is going to return I don't know how much of a factor that's going to play in will he affect the game that much I don't know but I'm discouraged from this draw and it's it's bad I feel the team could still get something out of the Etihad if Real Madrid are to win this tie it's gonna be by penalties because the way they neutralized Bellingham was genuinely scary genuinely think about it Bellingham has been one of our best players this season quiet and it's scary it's looking scary at the Etihad expect domination for a Man City but I hope I'm wrong when it comes to what I just said and if you have a different opinion I would like it if you share it in the comments and help me understand what point of view you think it is but if you enjoyed smash like subscribe because it truly helps me out peace